Greetings, customizers. Welcome to the next adventure at Talking Hands Customs. On this vehicle spotlight, we will be discussing the Stellar Stiletto. So without further ado, let's get down to business. The Stellar Stiletto was released in 1988, uh, during a time when things like the Stealth Fighter and space planes and armed space stations and the Star Wars program were all the rage uh, in North America. And Hasbro followed suit by introducing its very own rocket plane, uh, reminiscent of the old X-15 rocket plane uh, with a little bit of F-104 Starfighter in there. Uh, we got this gem that you see before you today. Uh, not without its flaws, but we're going to discuss the considerations for customizing this vehicle. So let's begin. Starting at the nose, uh, it is a rubber nose. So if you've never owned one of these before, uh, overall it's a simple design, but the nose itself is rubber and can be prone to uh, malformation. The best thing that I found to fix that warping is to use a hair dryer and heat down inside the nose and the exterior to make this rubber nice and soft. Hold it in place and you can either run it under cold water or if you have more patience, just wait there and uh, let it cool off naturally. Um, be cautious that depending on how much you heat this up, you don't wanna do it too, too much. Um, you don't wanna burn your fingers. So uh, just pay attention to that. After the nose cone, we've got this hot rod looking engine here. Um, some people may not like it just because it doesn't look very aerodynamic, but I think visually it's very interesting. Um, there's lots of uh, nooks and crannies in there to make sure you get your paint in there in that design. And what this does is that by not having a smooth nose from this rubber nose cone back to the fu main fuselage here is it can give you something to think about when you're placing stickers and the scheme you choose. Uh, for example, if you were to do this in Tiger Force colors, um, where would you put the shark mouth, right? So normally it might fit on, if this was a smooth tube, it might fit there, but in this case, not so much. So you have to take that into consideration when you're coming up with your plan. Moving back down to the main fuselage here, you can see it's got these uh, ribs on it, and that's actually a design reminiscent of the SR-71 Blackbird. It's used for dissipating heat and stuff. Uh, and the designers at Hasbro actually included it on the ship, which I thought was really clever. Um, there's a few other uh, strips here that are uh, stand proud of the overall surface, plus this pipe here. So you've lost this as a large decal placement um, surface. You do have a smooth surface right here, uh, and you can see where this sticker was lovingly placed kind of outside of it. Um, but it does run at a curve. So you can fit narrow, long decals parallel to the uh, horizontal plane here, but it is a curved surface. You have some smooth stuff up here as well. Um, so it does kind of channel you into putting some stickers there, um, if any at all. And as you can see down here at this side, there's a little bit of a surface that's nice and smooth as well for you to place a, again, long rectangular sticker. This seam in the fuselage here is part of the design. As you can see, it's not a gap. It's actually a little trench that goes all the way around for uh, good looks and charm. And uh, again, unless you make the bold decision to putty that over, then you're a little limited on what you can put there as well. Uh, moving down to the canopy, you've got a nice flush canopy. So part of the overall design aesthetic of having this rocket ship that goes super fast is that the canopy can't uh, bump up or bubble up be a bubble canopy like the Sky Striker or the Rattler. Um, so you've got this flat canopy here, which um, looks really good. Quite honestly, there's uh, there was a lot of good thought put into this, even if it's not necessarily my favorite vehicle, but I'll get into that in a bit. Um, after that, you've got a silver retaining clip here. Um, it's just got a little peg on it. And what it does is it holds the uh, canopy and the folding tail brackets in place. If you pop this out, then you can remove the canopy and the tail. Um, this can be tight on some examples, so just use caution when you're removing it. I found that a uh, little bit of prying action with an X-Acto knife and then just the wiggle, twist and pull, uh, nice and gentle pressure will remove that part no problem. If it does break uh, the bracket inside, the good news is, is that it'll be hidden once you replace the part. So um, you don't have to worry too, too much about that. But again, we try and use caution whenever we can, right? We want to preserve the uh, vehicle as much as possible. Uh, beside the canopy and this clip, we have these two hoses, which don't really make much sense design-wise. Uh, I kind of put it in the same category as this hot rod looking engine up here. But what it does do is it gives you a separate accessory to uh, make another color. So it'll provide some visual interest, uh, aside from just the overall shape of the vehicle. There's lots of greebly detail in here. The uh, front little uh, nook and cranny in here is actually rather deep. So just uh, 
make sure you double check if you're putting, uh, if you are painting this to uh, get the paint all the way down in there. Um, then we've got these short little stubby wings. Um, this is probably the first design flaw uh, physically that this vehicle suffers from. So if you think to vehicles like the Conquest X30, um, the Sky Striker and stuff like that, they either have a solid piece separated wing or in the X30's uh, case, it's a top and bottom half of a wing that splits apart. For the Stellar Stiletto, this wing is mounted to the bottom part of the fuselage, um, which is a little bit of an unusual thing to do. A lot of the times uh, for toys, the wing's mounted to the top, but in this case, it's mounted to the bottom. Aside from that, um, it also has some raised detail here and a raised circle for this emblem. Um, why is that an issue? Well, if you wanted to do something bigger on this wing, you would have to remove this detail. If that's not one of the things you want to do, then you're forced to put small stickers around here, um, find something that's the same size as that circle there, or a long rectangular sticker to go in there. Um, again, not so limiting once you get down into it, but uh, it is a little bit restrictive compared to a lot of other vehicles that you may customize. Um, and the consideration for this, depending on the scheme you choose, is that if the color of that scheme is split horizontally, top and bottom, that you'll have to mask off this wing in order to accomplish that. You can't pull it apart because it's one piece and it is molded to the bottom of the fuselage, um, which can get a little tricky because you can see, I'll remove the missile here, you can see how sharp that and deep that corner is where the wing meets the fuselage. So um, that's where your masking skills will really come to the fore. Not to mention that you still have to preserve whatever color uh, is on the top fuselage on this uh, peg here that keeps the vehicle snapped together. Um, where that could be a real problem is if you're trying to stay 100% uh, loyal or accurate to the Hasbro aesthetic like I, like I try to do is that if I were to do this in Sky Patrol, for example, the top surface, uh, the top fuselage would be chrome, but this wing would end up black because Hasbro tends to, um, on their solidly colored vehicles, paint entire pieces one color. Um, if it's a scheme like Tiger Force, you're off to the races, same thing with Python Patrol. But if you're looking at those bifurcated color schemes, then uh, you'll either have to make the decision to break with uh, the normal layout of a color scheme, and, or you'll have to, uh, mask this off, thereby taking one part and making it two colors. Not a big deal. Um, I think with the Sky Patrol, this would work well either way, but another consideration for you to take into account. Uh, moving back along the fuselage here, we've got some nicely molded and detailed engine bells. Um, these look like they're right off of a rocket or the space shuttle or something like that. Uh, this gray part here does come off. It's a straight pull off. It's got a nice solid connection there with just a little bit of wiggle on it but I haven't had a problem yet and I've customized two of these already. Um, and when the, uh, well, I'll get to the, these little bumpy parts here in a the, in the second. Uh, the other feature is that because it's a rocket ship, uh, they went super retro with it and super cool. And the tail actually cracks like this and then it stands on its engine thrusters. And that's what those three little feet do is that it keeps the engines off there for a little uh, taste of, let's call it real worldism there. And then it takes off and lands on its engine thrusters. So that's what makes the top of the ship. Moving to the bottom, um, the ship comes with some unique armament. It has these, uh, well, let's just call them space missiles. <laughs> it has four missiles, two, uh, two of each type. They've got these long, narrow ones, and then these shorter ones here. Um, the standard uh, missile attachment peg is here with the, uh, basically the panel with the two posts. So if you don't have these missiles, um, I read somewhere that the Sergeant Slaughter Triple T missiles work on here. So if you have one of those vehicle accessory packs, then you can alternatively arm your Stellar Stiletto. Uh, the other piece it has here is a swiveling laser cannon. So that's fantastic. It comes off, it's a separate accessory, um, which gives you all the options to uh, make it another color to uh, make your scheme work. Or if you're going with one single color to make it pop by making this another color. Uh, detail on the bottom, there's a lot of it. So just like on the top of the, uh, of the engines here, the bottom is equally greeblied and it has equally deep, if not slightly deeper uh, crevices to make sure that you uh, get your paint coverage in there. So um, definitely something to look forward to uh, if you're hand brushing, if you're spray painting, um, enjoy. That's all I can say about that. Um, the other details molded on the bottom here. I love this detail here. It's, um, it's very reminiscent of the space shuttle fuel tanks. Um, I like that they're there. Some people might say, well, they're, you know, they're vulnerable, whatever. Sure, yeah, got it. 
But the fact that they thought about putting the fuel tanks like this on a space type vehicle, um, I think really ties it in well to some real world subjects and gives it that, um, that connection to reality. Um, other than that, uh, there's another paint trap back here. So when you crack the tail, you can actually see right into the spaceship. So when you open this up, you want to make sure that you get paint on the inside of the on the inside of the shell as well here, um, and that goes for the cockpit as well, because the um, footwells for the figure are so deep. You can see right inside the cockpit. So. Both times I've customized this, I've when I've opened up the fuselage, I've done the inside and the outside of each piece to ensure proper coverage. And that extends to the tail, uh, to the engines here, is that those are split horizontally. So each uh, fuselage piece gets half a circle, so make sure you get some paint in there as well. Um, and that's really the size of it. So let's talk about the reason why you might want to customize a Stellar Stiletto. It's red. Um, I had one of these as a kid. I liked it. I was into stealth planes and space planes and all that sort of stuff. The future is now. But this was at a time when G.I. Joe was becoming more science fiction oriented uh, and moving away from its military roots. Um, so you started to get more, um, I don't want to say, let's just say they became more creative uh, and more artistically free in their uh, vehicle design. And... The Stellar Stiletto is odd. It stands out in that it is the only vehicle, I'm not counting the Pogo Battle Ball thing, because we're just not going to talk about that. Um, it's the only one that, that I can think of that takes off and lands vertically like this. Yeah, you've got the, the Crusader shuttle has landing gear, and then the Defiant has its own launch gantry and everything else, but this is the only one that sits on its own on its tail. Um, notwithstanding the fact that you can stand the Crusader up on its engines as well, blah, blah, blah. But um, for a small vehicle, it's the only one that does it. Um, inside, the other uh, design crutch is the cockpit is molded as one piece. So the chair, you can't pull anything out of the cockpit for customization, and it's molded to the top half of the fuselage. Uh, again, where that can be a problem is with something like Sky Patrol, where the cockpits and or the seats tend to be that uh, barf orange-brown color. And... Um, in which case you're almost forced to mask that off if you're trying to stick with that. I would recommend against chroming the inside because if you put a figure in there, depending on how that chrome uh, reacts over time, it may damage a figure. Uh, I haven't had any chromed subjects long enough to be able to state that definitively, but it is my concern. So if I were to do this in Sky Patrol, I would actually mask the canopy off with it still on, do the chrome around the outside and then paint the inside or vice versa. Uh, maybe do the inside first. Uh, but anyways, have the canopy on, mask it off, and just be careful because there's gaps in all these parts here where paint can fly in. So you really want to make sure you stuff it full of Kleenex or use whatever masking uh, tool you want, but uh, cover in all those little uh, nooks and crannies where you don't want that chrome to go. Um, so yeah, it's red. That's my big beef with this thing. Uh, getting back to the design choices. Um, aside from the, the manufactured choices of having the wing attached to the lower fuselage and the cockpit as one piece as part of the upper fuselage, as customizers, um, that's just something we'll have to deal with. But the red color is what kills me about it. Um, yes, red is a cobra color, but I think it's the red in combination with the gray where it just kind of went, okay, well, it's not, it's not like the other cobra vehicles. I mean, everything else was blue and black. You might have had one or two red things. Uh, Iron Grenadiers was coming out at the same time. They had some red vehicles, but this wasn't an Iron Grenadiers vehicle. And speaking of that, this is the pilot. This is called the Star Viper. Um, as an action figure, it's renowned for having weak gold paint application. So uh, a lot of the times you'll have uh, a figure like this with that gold paint worn off. Not to fear, because all you have to do is reapply it yourself as a customizer. That is part and parcel of what you do. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure this is the one that I refurbished as well. Um, but yeah, it's not an Iron Grenadier. Not part of the roster, and yet it wears the black, gold, and red of Iron Grenadiers. So in this case, it's almost like there was no um, hard line differentiating a regular Cobra vehicle from this new line of black, red, and gold vehicles, like uh, Destro's Dominator, I think it is, the helicopter tank. Um, it's all red, but meanwhile, the Demon is mostly black. So with a Stellar Stiletto not being affiliated with that sub-team, 
it kind of seems like it should have been, but it wasn't. Um, so a little bit of a mixed message, let's call it at the end of the day. Um, but I didn't like because it it's red. So I have one of these that's going to stay on the shelf, likely, for a bit anyway, <laughs> in the original red color, uh, just because of nostalgia. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me, if you've never used or owned one of these before, um, it's ripe for customizing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now uh, what this looks like in another color. Just a straight recolor, right? Because that's the first thing anyone might think about for doing a custom is what if I just change the color? Would I like it more? So here it is in black. Um, I love this way more. To me, that's um, for a couple of reasons. Black just looks cool on everything, right? Um, but with the black, with the red accents and just a little bit of gray, I mean, that fits in with the stinger, the hiss, the cat, the shard de salt, if you're Canadian, all that kind of stuff. Um, it just seems more cobra-like to me. <clears throat> um, I'm missing a couple of the missiles, but as you can see, um, with the dark red, this is corn red painted on here. Uh, the black is Vallejo black primer. Um, and the gray bits are unpainted, so I got to leave some natural plastic showing. Uh, the stickers are a combination of toy hack stickers and leftover stickers from other stuff. Um, so I got some of the, you know, the unique uh, funky writing in there that they always like to put on a lot of their serial numbers, the extreme heat. So there's still some of that uh, original Stellar Stiletto flair, but the original one didn't have all that much in the way of stickers. And... Um, I added a few that were custom printed as well, just to uh, give some pizzazz to the bottom. And once I find the two long missiles again, I'll put those on there in red as well. But I think just by repainting that black, I've pushed it further into the side of Cobra. Um, and that makes the world a difference to me. Uh, and the, can the cockpit is all black as well. It was a straight repaint, very simple to do. Um, I had this done in a couple of hours. Um, and those are the nicest customs, right? It doesn't take you seven days or three weeks to do it. It's done in, in you know, just a few hours of that uh, bench work. But as you can see side by side, um, they both look good. I mean, it's a, it's a nice physical design, <clears throat> but I think that the black and red recoloring certainly makes it more uh, striking and uh, pleasing to the eye and definitely more of a Cobra vehicle. Um, and I'm gonna show you one more now because that's the Cobra side and that's just a straight recolor. But if we put it onto one of the sub teams, what if we put it onto <clears throat> Night Force? Um, say what you will about Night Force, I love it. Um, I never had any as a kid, never got to go to Toys R Us, blah, blah, blah. And now that I've been painting things in Night Force colors, I almost can't stop. Um, in a previous uh, tutorial, I showed you how many, like I ordered a bulk order of Night Force stickers for this exact reason. Um, this was a long-term plan of mine to get this done in Night Force color. So, um, this is kind of a living proof of changing the scheme. So the black recolor was just a black recolor. The silver accessories go without saying. I mean, that's easy to do. But now, where do you put a different team's stickers on the Stellar Stiletto? So, um, I've kept a lot of the little warning things I, I put on before off because of the Night Force um, aesthetic. There's not too many of those stickers uh, available, little uh, rescue arrows or hazard plaques or whatever. But what I did is using the areas I described to you on the original uh, piece is where I placed these stickers. So there was a uh, an ace marking there, how many G.I. Joe guys had shot down. Um, it makes the perfect space for this nice long uh, G.I. Joe logo and serial number. And then I put the country sticker uh, on that side part here on this sponson. And the uh, Night Force Star fits perfectly in that circle right there with a little room to spare as well. Um, with the Night Force logo itself, now uh, the stickers I had, uh, there was no chevron small enough to go anywhere. I thought about maybe putting it on the tail, but it was just too much going on back here given the orange engines and the green gray tail. Um, so the squared off Night Force uh, emblem from one of the sets worked perfectly. I don't mind that it's not the chevron shape because the Night Boomer, which is the Sky Striker, um, had rectangular stickers on the tail, at least in the examples I've seen. So, um, and there you see I've picked out that retaining clip in orange. The engines are orange as well. Um, and all the missiles are orange with the nose. Um, I was a little concerned in this case about going a little too much with the orange, but at the end of the day, I'm matching the um, aesthetic of Action Force based off the Night Boomer and then uh, augmented by my Conquest X-30 that is also in Night Force colors. Um, with the gray I chose for this, it was a bit of an experiment and I am really happy with it. 
Uh, in the tutorial about Night Force, we talked about grays and a little bit of undertone of green. Um, this color does it uh, much better and it looks even different comparing it on the camera to uh, looking at it with just the Mark I eyeball. But from a distance, it looks like a gray, but it is a green. So mind blown, there's a little blemish there I have to fix. But uh, that is green and it's called uh, Sack Bomber Green by Mission Models. That's what I use. There's a couple of other greens that are close to it. Um, this one, I enjoyed the tone of it in comparing it to the Night Force Hovercraft, which is the Night Stalker, I think. Uh, the contrast between the black and the gray green, uh, in my eye, looked to match those values there. So it's called Sack Bomber Green. That's Strategic Air Command. So this used to be one of the colors used on those B-52 bombers. Um, and that's its federal standard number. So if you find it made by another company, it's 34159. Okay. Um, and with Mission Models products, I do like them. So uh, we're good to go there. So the other consideration as well for Night Force is, of course, tinting the canopy. And this was done with Tamiya Smoke. Uh, one or two layers of it. This time, on uh, this one, it's... Um, what I tried with the application was something just a little bit different. I, I let the paint cool a little bit. So that's putting it on basically in a thick, wet coat. Uh, not to the point of it getting runny, but certainly uh, more than just a dry dusting, which is something the airbrush can do whether you want it to or not sometimes. Uh, and I'm very pleased with the result. I think this looks absolutely striking. Um, I was bouncing around with a name for it because Night Force changes the names of everything. Um, another customizer did a uh, custom of this, looks a little different. They called it the Night Star, which I thought was really cool. Um, so right now, I don't want to take their name. Not that it really matters by the, at the end of the day. But um, I was bouncing around with Night Sword or Night Blade, um, just because it's an edged weapon. So um, yeah, I think this looks fantastic. Uh, when I was finishing it, before I even put the stickers on, I was flying this thing around the house because I just think that that looks fantastic. The uh, final uh, clear coat I put on here was the Mission Models uh, semi-gloss, and I like the sheen that that provides. Um, and of course, the stickers glow in the dark, and they're from Rattler Repros down in Mexico. So uh, definitely worth it, because uh, one of the cool features of Night Force is it glows in the dark. So that's what I've done so far. Um, and I think that about wraps it up. So when you're looking at the Stellar Stiletto as a vehicle, uh, maybe you didn't like it before, but maybe consider just picturing it another color, even Cobra Blue. Um, and you may find that with other vehicles as well, that you might have them in, in your stash, or you might look at it online and it's cheap, but you don't want it. Picture it in another color, and maybe you'll fall in love with it. Um, as I re-fell in love with the Stellar Stiletto by doing that myself. So that's all there is to it. It's a simple, small vehicle uh, with a few design considerations, uh, at least for making sure that your paint goes where you want it to, and your stickers go where they will look the best. So that's all there is to it. Um, what I'd like to do is take this time to thank my subscribers. I appreciate the support. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to drop a like and subscribe. And we will see you on the next adventure. In the meantime, be safe and have fun.